Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day. Drones, I've talked about these things and unmanned ground vehicles quite a few times on my channel and they seem to be developing more and more every single day. Some of the iterations or versions of these vehicles are pretty interesting actually, whether it be supply vehicles, combat vehicles, reconnaissance vehicles, transport vehicles, there's a whole host of options and I feel this technology, as I've mentioned many times before, is going to exponentially improve and be utilized and capitalized on the battlefield more because it does have a lot of added value and a lot of features that could really benefit armed forces around the world. Some of the key things that prevent that though is cost and development. Some of these things just aren't quite ready yet. There's a lot of testing going in, a lot of militaries are a little hesitant to bring these vehicles onto the battlefield not only for cost, but also for effectiveness. The difficulty with these vehicles in what context they can actually be used in, and militaries are finding that there's a very wide spectrum of scenarios that you can use these in. For instance, counterinsurgency, like these guys trying to place a bomb terribly. And, uh, you know, one of the key features that they're looking at now is artillery with unmanned ground vehicles. Now, as an artillery gunner myself, I'm fascinated by this because, uh, you know, I don't want to potentially lose my job in the next 15 to 20 years by some robot taking over, putting rounds down range instead of me. Now, looking at some of the variations that are out there today, there's some rather special ones, including this one that looks literally like a Zamboni uh, with a gun on top of it. If you don't know what a Zamboni is, it's basically the machine that refreshes the ice in hockey arenas. And I can safely say I don't think this one's going to take my job. I really hope not, because if it does, I will not only cry in laughter, uh, but also cry in uh, pain and misery, knowing that, uh, you know, a gunner's role is replaced by a Zamboni. But I digress. Uh, yes, there is uh, iterations of UGVs, or unmanned ground vehicles, turning into the artillery platforms that we normally associate with either field guns or self-propelled guns, and it does open up some rather interesting debate and discussion, and I'd like to talk a little bit about it today. Now, Ryan Mattel are very, very good at their showcasing of, you know, military equipment and and publicizing what they're looking at doing with their vehicles and recently they just released a rather interesting uh, video regarding the UGV Mission Master. Now I've done some videos on Ryan Mattel making versions of this type of UGV before, whether it be the ground transport version with the rather tubby soldiers uh, that are working alongside it. Uh, I'm not trying to insult these soldiers or anyone else who's tubby or you know overweight in the military, it's just an interesting concept that where they're talking about transporting things on a vehicle it just it doesn't create the best image you know laziness and all that sort of stuff anyway i digress again um the artillery vehicle variant of this ugv is is fascinating to me for the fact that i feel like they're stepping over the boundary of what should and should not be part of these platforms the artillery requires something that can be used as a standoff quickly uh, with as much firepower as possible. We need to provide indirect or direct fire to the All Arms Battle as much as humanly possible. You know, getting rounds onto target accurately and effectively is there to support all the other troops that are ahead or behind or wherever they are in the battlefield. This thing does open up a couple of interesting questions. Firstly, why is it that the UGV is required to have artillery pieces on it? A lot of people that I've discussed this kind of concept with have said, well, it doesn't make any sense. How are you going to resupply it? That's one of the big things for me, okay? Having this thing with rockets on the back of it or a gun, i.e., you know, say a 105mm gun or something like that, you're only going to be as useful as a small reconnaissance detachment, you know, as much supplies as you have. When you're setting out in a small patrol, say an artillery detachment with one of these things, you're really going to be limited on how much ammunition you have. Now, in a field garden scenario, we have the same problem, right? We can only fit so much ammunition in the back of a truck or in, you know, the supply vehicles that follow us. But for the most part, when it comes to vehicles, that ammunition supply is very large. UGVs have some restrictions upon what they can actually do. They can only carry so much and can only be powered for so long. Even with gasoline or batteries, whatever you're using inside of these things, they'll only last for a certain period of time. And if you're a foot patrol bringing this thing along with you, in my personal opinion, if you're an artillery gunner, this would be a burden. Trying to get this thing, you know, out stuck of a ditch because it's bogged down or, you know, you fired all 12 tubes of your rockets like this thing and maybe you have 12 more in the back of it. But what's the point? I, I don't see the huge added value in this. This kind of weapon system being placed as a small detachment to go out on their own or maybe three or four of these things, launch a ton of rockets and come home, doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Dismounted artillery gunners would have to walk with this thing. They're not going to ride on it. So you're asking an artillery detachment 
or artillery battery maybe even to walk alongside this weapon system load it up and launch it and then walk back i don't understand its premise some of the UGVs that are using a small arms weapon system or sort of a medium range weapon system, such as a 50 caliber machine gun or a dushka that you see on the Russian side of things, that makes a little bit more sense because I've talked about this in the past. Setting a couple of these things up as an overwatch position and providing accurate fire, i.e. supportive fire, from a firebase makes sense. You know, you can have this thing scanning and watching, you have an operator monitoring the, the battlefield. Having this thing launching 12 rockets at a time, once it's empty, it's done. And, and it's unlike small arms fire, you can carry a lot more bullets on these things than you can rockets. Rockets are very space, I guess, overtaking, right? The tube alone, you know, and the rocket launcher itself takes up huge amounts of space. Then you've got to get the, you know, the space for it to actually be held for extra ammunition. Whereas a small arms machine gun, say a GPMG or a C6 or a 50 caliber, its profile is a lot less. Uh, it's not as cumbersome, it's less weight. And then you can carry, you know, thousands upon thousands of rounds on this thing and provide a solid firebase and continue on with the mission later on. Not only that, but because the weapon system is smaller, you could potentially ride it as a small detachment or a reconnaissance patrol uh, or any other kind of vehicle like that. The interesting thing with this rocket system is obviously it's basically an indirect fire roll for the most part. I'm sure it could be used in a direct fire roll. I wouldn't see, again, the huge added value in that. But if it's used in an indirect fire roll, you're not given the same kind of optics or the same kind of reconnaissance capabilities that some of the UGVs have with the small arm systems. You know, for instance, the cameras that are placed alongside the 50 caliber of some of the more uh, complex uh, reconnaissance vehicles or fire support vehicles of UGBs have very high quality and high precision and high magnification optics on there that allow you to reconnaissance and, and reconnoiter areas that you know this thing with the rockets would not really be able to do because it doesn't require optics it uses GPS it uses uh, navigation systems that are placed upon where it is to calculate its bearing and its angle to launch those projectiles in an indirect capability so again you're kind of reducing the requirement of this thing you know I can't ride on it it's taking up a huge amount of space once I fire my 12 rockets and maybe one reload pack after that I'm now just toting along a vehicle that I can't really do much with okay it can carry my rucksack or my small pack and now it's just a burden to me I've still got to walk beside it it's probably loud um, and it just to me in terms of the artillery standpoint in such a small configuration without resupply yeah not too sure about it i'd personally prefer the artillery to if they're going to go ugv and and you know unmanned ground vehicles or drone technology beef it up let's get it big let's get this thing dedicated to be an artillery weapons platform this setup with Rhine Metal is modular, which basically means they're experimenting with different modules or weapon systems to put on top of the carrier system, which is the, you know, 8x8 or 6x6 variants of these things they have. They're basically looking at different ways of which can be applied for militaries around the world, trying to sell something that, you know, would make sense for a certain mission or certain capability. But at the end of the day, if you're going to go in the artillery realm and you want maximum firepower, Go big or go home, okay? The ground vehicle that they're using, this 8x8, doesn't make sense. If you want to get a heavy-duty artillery basis, do what the Americans are looking at, okay? They're actually looking at placing 155mm guns on uh, vehicles that have been not been utilized as much anymore. For instance, you know, some of the armored uh, personnel carriers and the, you know, mine protective and mine resistant vehicles that we use in, say, Afghanistan and Iraq. A lot of them are coming home and they're starting to find that they don't need... That requirement anymore for places such as you know eastern europe and the scenarios that are looking into there so they have all these mine blast equipment uh, vehicles that are kind of becoming redundant and not as useful in in certain contexts when they will come home of course there's still many uses for them out there in operations for the united states around the world whether it be afghanistan iraq or wherever but there's too many of them now and they need to repurpose them and they're looking at repurposing these things as drones uh, big heavy duty trucks that can carry a huge amount of either ammunition or firepower on top of it and one of those items is the 155 millimeter gun that is where i think we need to look at more uh the small scale artillery don't see the value in it uh as i said if i was told as a small detachment take this vehicle launch 12 rockets and then walk home i i, I just don't get it uh, even if you were to resupply the vehicle with say another couple of ugvs that had a ton more rockets on there now you're toting five or six of these things behind you all you know simultaneously automated by one another 
And once again, once they empty, now you've just got six vehicles that you've got to bring home, which I'm sure are not cheap uh, and are not uh, something that you want to tell the battle group commander, hey, by the way, we just got sick of toting these things around and getting stuck and whatever else. Uh, we just left them behind. Whereas the artillery, you know, if you have a heavier duty drone, you know that you either have to get on board with it or you can set it up from a control point. Now, the control point basis of this makes a little bit more sense. Instead of following this thing along that we see in some of this footage as the soldiers are doing, set these things out in sort of a swarm technology, right? Have 12 of these things that are commanded or directed from a command post, right? The command post sends these things out. Everybody stays and controls them from inside the command post, similar to that of a Reaper drone or, you know, aircraft drones that have those, you know, ISO containers that are in the middle of nowhere in Las Vegas. And do it that way, right? Have a, a hub that controls them. But having a detachment of these guys following them around, it, it really doesn't make a huge amount of sense. And it still comes back to the point of if you're going to do that, go big or go home. Let's get some big SPGs that are, you know, automated, auto-loading, and could put massive amounts of firepower down and use them instead. Because these small little rocket systems like this, if, I don't understand its context overall and, and how effective it's going to be on the battlefield for small-scale artillery engagements. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of my opinion on it. So, talking about this, I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that drone technology or unmanned ground vehicles with artillery implementation of weapons is, is practical? Do you think it's going to be the future? Do you feel that it's gaining added value to the battlefield? Or do you agree with what I'm saying? You know, it may be somewhat of a burden. And it doesn't make sense to go for these small, lightweight vehicles when if you're going to really choose artillery capability in a drone format, let's go big. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I appreciate you all stopping by on today's video. If you did enjoy it, I would strongly encourage you to do a few things for me and I would appreciate you doing so. Firstly, share it on your social media. Get it on Facebook. I'd love for other people to tech. Uh, some interest in some of these uh, topics and, and military uh, conversation. Also, uh, you can check out my Patreon page if you wish to. Uh, the links for these things are in the description box below. And I'd like to thank everybody who is part of my Patreon um, and who's been supporting me financially. And also to all my members who have uh, become members and then support and subscribe to my channel um, monthly. Once again, I will be getting your names placed in these videos at the end of the credits to keep up the perks that I've been providing. Uh, for those of you who do want to become members of my channel, I'll be doing uh, some uh, updates in the future with the perks. Uh, one of the perks is actually that if you uh, become a uh, long-term member um, of uh, the channel, you can actually have dedicated videos made of your choosing. Of course, they have to go through approval first, but uh, something to look out to in the future. And of course, your name and credits will be placed upon that video. Uh, once again, thank you again for joining me. Check out those links in the description box and I will see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye. Force protection and combat support. Whoever designed this system, really is a genius. Genius, an Elvin IAI joint venture. Ah, no, no, please, no more, no more. No more.